Aloha, you're watching F5 On Demand. I'm Technical Marketing Manager Peter Silva. We're here at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas for the IBM Pulse 2013 conference. If you're at the show, we're in booth E508. Please come by and visit us. And again, we have Nojin Moshiri. He's our solutions architect, right Nojin? That's right, that's right. For our IBM partnership. Software partnership. Software partnership. And so recently there was uh, integration with our big IP application security manager and IBM's, I'm going to cheat here, Infosphere Guardium, and it's a security solution with IBM, right? That's correct. And so I thought it would be cool to get a little deeper dive into how the Infosphere Guardium integrates with our big IP application security manager. And so first, can you tell us a little bit about IBM's Guardium and what it does? Yeah, so uh, Guardium is a database security product. It sits between app servers and the database. Now, you can capture the actual data traffic in a number of different ways. There could be a kernel module, a kernel tap as they call it, or there could be an S tap that goes in there. In either case, the idea is that Guardium is getting all of the data that's transferring between your app servers and the database. Okay. And then they're analyzing that and then blocking it. The piece that has been missing has been front end context about the users that are coming into the site. So if you imagine a standard three tier deployment, you have web servers, app servers, database. Guardium is operating at that app server database layer. They don't have a lot of introspection into what's going on in the front. Got it. So F5 and IBM partnered last year and with the release of Guardium version nine and Big IP version 11.3, we now have a real-time link between the two products. And so what you're talking about is, is the, the Guardium will, will block the attack, will block the, or, or protect against vulnerabilities, block the attack, but in that instance, it doesn't necessarily have that additional contextual information, like the user's IP address, the, the potentially the user name of that, of that you know, potentially malicious guy, and other metadata to then correlate that information with the uh, attack information, right? That's exactly it. And Guardium does so much more than blocking too. They're, they're really an analytics and reporting engine. It's, it's, an it's really a Lamborghini of <laughs> security products. And it, the user manual is big. The, you, the ramp up time is three to four months. It's really an amazing product. But exactly, they don't have that front end data. So together, we really have this one plus one equals three type, you know, right. to reuse that cliche, uh, very, very much uh, implemented. So what are you going to, so we got our uh, monitor up and I believe, um, well, I'll let you walk us through this notion. Yeah, let me, so the flow is exactly what we talked about. We've got clients coming in the front and they're hitting local traffic manager as well as, in this case, I'm, I'm focusing on ASM, the application security piece. Now they're load balanced to whatever app they go to. In this case, I'm using Maximo because we're at the Maximo show. At the same time that the data is going through Maximo and doing all the database requests, two other things are happening. One, ASM is sending that exactly that metadata that you were talking about over to Guardium. And then the database is getting the, d the data from the, the databases uh, and importing it in. Okay. That's all happening in real time. Now, I've also pointed out the SIMs in this thing. This, this whole architecture doesn't invalidate the use of SIMs. So if you have QRadar or Splunk or Logarithm or any other SIM, that's fine. The difference is you have to configure the SIM access either on all the applications and all your databases, or you have to configure the SIM from the ASM perspective and then also the Guardian perspective it's a little bit more cumbersome to set up. Certainly you're going to have a SIM, but it's not going to give you real-time protection. The SIM is not there to protect you. Right. It's there to collect. Yep. So that's perfectly fine. And we'll dive into a demo and show how this all actually works. Awesome, let's check this out. All right, so let me jump in first to, for the F5 fans in the house, the <laughs> ASM configuration. Okay. I'll talk a little bit about what I've done. I'm running local traffic manager and ASM on the same box here. And if, if you're not familiar, real quick, ASM is our web application firewall, That's application security firewall. manager. Yep. Yep. So I'm, I'm demonstrating on a WebSphere e-commerce system today called Madison Store. 
And you can see I've set up this Madison store virtual. It's just one server. I'm running SSL on it. Now, let's just take a look at that real quick for people that are interested in this sort of thing. A couple of the interesting things that I'm doing. I've got all the acceleration, one connect, and WAN optimization and compression applied to that. So this is really, nothing about our WAF takes away all of the great acceleration features that we have. I'm also doing full SSL decrypt and re-encrypt step down. So I've, I have SSL coming in on the server side, on the client side, and then back to the server side. Okay. I'm re-encrypting this, so it's SSL all the way through. But to point out that I'm still getting all that data because we're unencrypting, analyzing, and then recrypting. And the last thing that ties all this together. I, you know, I find that to be one of the cool things about the big IPs is being able you know, to, man, to terminate SSL, inspect, manipulate, do whatever we need to do with it, and then if necessary, re-encrypt from that point on all the way back to the application itself. Really powerful. And we could be doing step down we could be you know, taking a 2K key and turning it into a 1K key. It's really, the, the possibilities are. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. Now, the, the thing that ties this all together is the HTTP class. This is what implements our WAF. Okay. Just for the people out there that may be curious about that. So let's take a look at the WAF config. On the ASM side, what I've done is really straightforward. I've created a policy here. I have one for Maximo as well. In this case, we're looking at Madison's. And it's in blocking mode. I've implemented a, really a policy that uh, most people would. I've, I've taken it from a learning mode. So by putting traffic through the box, ASM has made the decisions about what does this traffic look like? What, is, what are the different things that I'm trying to protect? Yep. And all of the deployments for this are in our deployment guide. I'm not going to belabor the point. But the one thing I want to point out is we've now added an integrated service called Database Firewall. And in this menu, by clicking the Enable button and telling it what source of information you'd like to send out, we are connecting to DataGuard. Oh, okay. Uh, Guardium. Guardium. <laughs> Sorry. So what other, um, so on this drop down right here, what other options are there? I see there's a drop down. Yeah, this so is actually interesting. We can also use Access Policy Manager to do the same thing. Oh, okay. Um, what we're doing here is we're defining the metadata that ASM is using to correlate between its system and the Guardian system. Got so it. it's usually username yeah. is what we're interested in. Now we can define that manually or what we're saying here is if you have Access Policy Manager, so the user's logging into that, we've created a real-time link there too. We're just going to take the username and session ID from APM and send it to Guardian directly. Got so it. you don't have to figure all that out. Right, right. It makes it really easy. Otherwise, you have to do a little bit of manual work to figure that out yourself. Yeah, so if you, if you already got it, we're just, hey, just grab those two things and ship it over. Exactly. Got it. Um, we'll, we'll talk here as well. In our database firewall and the integrated services menu, this is where I'm defining Guardium. So the IP address or the load balance, if I'm load balancing Guardium, that's where I would put it in, the port, and then some timeout values. So this creates the TCP connection between the two hosts. Oh, okay. And all of this is new in version 11.3. So let's jump over and take a look at it from the Guardium perspective. Now, uh, Guardium has a system map. This is the system view that you see when you log into Guardium. For those of you that may not be familiar with it, so I've, these are the sources that are feeding data into Guardium. Okay. And you can see right now I've got the big IP shows up. Uh, this is automatic. As soon as you create the link, that line shows up. Ah. And then I have my Maximo host, and then down here is this WebSphere Commerce host that I've set up the demo with. And that's a DB2 tap, so it's using the DB2 database, and it gives you some more information. Is it using, in this case, it's using the kernel tap module. Okay. So, which port is the database running on? And then down here, you get some performance statistics. The big IP coming in, the STAP inspection engines coming in, and how many actual packets have we captured? Ah. 
So nice little overview, but this is really the complete surface of what this tool can do. And do the, I mean, obviously the colors mean something up here? Yeah, the, my, my DB2 host is right now synchronizing. Okay. These two hosts are offline. These are demos I'd set up that I've abandoned. And the two that are green are active and communicating right now. Nice. Yeah, good question. So let's take a look at what this would look like in a, from a user perspective. This is that demo site I've set up, the yep. Madison demo store. And I'll go ahead and sign out here. So a user comes in and they're going to log in. Oops. Uh, live demo, so fun. Okay. So, you know, at this point, they're already going through Big IP. All of the SSL, the compression, the web acceleration, all of that is happening through this. That one page where you set up all the selections for the virtual server. Exactly. So what are you buying here? Oh, you need some silverware I do, for? I do need some silverware. It's okay. an everyday silverware for only $14.99. Oh, wow. Get, get two. Okay, I'll get two. So uh, we'll, I'll pay you after. All right, I got you covered. Yep. So everything that you'd imagine that a user would do on the site. We're sure. not changing the look and the feel of the site in any way. So now what does this, and we'd go through the checkout and do all of the things that we would do. I had some other things in my cart apparently as well. So now what does this look like on the Guardium side? I've set up some reports. The power of Guardium is in this reporting. Okay. So we'll go through, and I've now I've run the Guardium demo report uh, that's giving me a full list of information, sorting it by time, and here we are. So this is the transaction that I just took. So all the information about the database, a lot of stuff that's not going to change, but the application user, this is the context that we're pulling from the front. This is the user that I just logged in as, my client IP address, and then the name of that virtual on LTM. Oh, wow. And then here's all the SQL that I ran. Now, of course, it's gobbledygook to you and I, but when you have an attack, or when you're trying to figure out a user has compromised your system, what did they do? Right. Now you have a record of that front end user and every single statement that they ran. Of course, this could be a great troubleshooting tool. It could for a number of different purposes, right? And it doesn't, yeah, right, it doesn't necessarily have to be based on an attack or something bad occurring. It's, it's really all about gathering that information, good or bad, and then being able to understand it better. Exactly, exactly. So quite powerful. Um, the, the reporting that you can set up with Guardium is really, I think you could get a PhD in this. <laughs> so it, it really runs the gamut. You can set alerts, triggers. You know, if a particular user is accessing a particular set of SQL that they shouldn't be, maybe this is a read-only system. There's never to be, you, you know, we see select, select, select. Maybe there should never be an insert by a non-privileged user. We can set a trigger to go off on that. And then, and then does the, does the, um, does the policy then get updated right there and then once we send, send the information back? Um, the policy gets updated on Guardium. Got it, okay. Yes. So that's wow. It. This is great stuff. And so for, for businesses, it just makes, makes this entire, the troubleshooting, if they have this in place, all of this metadata, all of the contextual information to then match up with this, the SQL statements, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, from a deployment perspective, one thing that really excites me is that you don't have to deploy these things together. Both our products are very sophisticated, complicated tools. You can have local traffic manager there already, probably already do. You can bring on ASM. You can deploy Guardium. When you're ready, you can link the two of them together. All of them are going to bring all their full value before you do that. Once you hook them up together, the sum is going to be greater than the parts. Wow. And I believe I, I actually, you know, when I was cheating earlier, yeah. So we do have, um, so we got a white paper. We have a white paper. Off the website and a, and a deployment guide. The deployment guide gives you step by step how to deploy it both on. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, the deployment guide gives you step by step how to deploy it on our side as well as the Guardian side. There's, you have to do some configuration on there of course and it's all documented in there. 
Great stuff, Nojin. Thank Thanks for joining Thank us again today. So there you have it. A lot more, I usually say a little bit more, but actually a lot more about the Big IP Application Security Manager and the IBM Guardium Security Solution Integration. Great stuff, it's real interesting. So for Nogen, thanks again today. I got Janice behind the lens, thank you Janice. I'm Peter, and we're with F5 Networks. Thanks for watching. <laughs>